Right, let's have a look. We just looked at Chelsea and how they're shaping up. Let's look at a couple of my former clubs, mm. Scott. Obviously, we'll start with Crystal Palace. Do you want to go to Palace first? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I mean, look, t- talk to me about Michael Elise going and the effect, first of all, that it, will have. It will have an effect, of course, if one of your best players <laughs> leaves. It depends what happens in terms of the other best players. What happens with Mark Gahey? What happens with Eze? What happens with uh, Mateta? And by the way, I would not have never put Mateta into that bracket mm. bef- the, about 10 months ago, but now he is in that bracket as one of their most important players. If they can keep hold of those three as well and, and add some quality, then... I think they'll be okay. He's always going to be a big miss. There were some injury issues with Michael Elise. He didn't stay fit for the whole season. So I think they're they're going to be quietly confident, Crystal Palace. And look, my contacts at Crystal Palace tell me that they have earmarked a few players that potentially could go on to become a better player than Michael Elise. Who oh. that's going to be, I do not Who's know. Who's your contact? Come I on. can't tell you. Yeah, you, know, you, know the rules. Yeah. you know the rules. £60 million pounds not insignificant for a player who's very, very talented, but yes. is not always fit. Yeah, and I, I don't even remember how much he bought him. £12 million maybe, mm. maybe, with add-ons. I think he wasn't an awful lot of money. So that is great business. And I think if you look at... January or last season when they were reporting a, a real low release clause which turned out not to be the case and then they ended up putting this 60 million release clause it's a good deal for everyone Michael Lise is going to a top top European football club where he will flourish and I think he will do extremely well at Bayern Munich and if they can reinvest this into some quality, then Crystal Palace will be absolutely fine. And I think they will be competing along with the the, the West Ham's for that um, last European spot next season. I do really you think? Feel, yeah, Interesting. Really do. Charlie Riad has, has joined for £40 million pounds from Real Betis as yeah. well. Is that to try and strengthen the squad or maybe with an eye of Mark Gohe going uh, there's, they're, they're probably the very best at this in terms of Steve Parrish Dougie Freeman and the, and the powers that be at Palace in, in replacing potential players that could go I think it, like we said earlier it's going to take an awful lot of money to get Mark Gahey away from the club you've got jo- Joachim Anderson who as well had a, a good Euros tournament a couple of poor decisions that went against him but he had a good tournament so Riyadh's not going to get in if they, if, if they keep those two? I think potentially one one for the future. Or just back up. We, we know what squads are like. Squads have to be strong. They have to, Especially if you are going to try and progress. Palace have always been 12th, 13th, 14th. Now uh, our very own Alan Pardew was the last manager to take them yeah. to 10th in yeah. the Premier League. And they've done that It'll again. Insane, and now they? they need to progress even further. Because even with the loss of Michael Elise, their squad's good enough to, to be challenging for European football. I, I noticed that uh, Palace played Charlton, of course, in pre-season. They it was do, a 1-1 draw. And of course, Jez Raksaki had to score against Charlton Absolutely. as well. After and you the... know what? They are always a draw, those two, those <laughs> games. They're always a draw in pre-season. But look, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to how Crystal Palace look this season. But... We've we've still got time. I'm 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 certainly looking forward to my my the club I come through the academy at in Ipswich come for, come up from the championship last season yeah. finished second. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to. Let's, how let's they talk react. about Ipswich then. I mean, just the fact of of keeping Kieran McKenna. How, how key was that? Oh, it, it's the well, it's the signing of the summer for Ipswich. They've they've signed some good players. Of course, Amari Hutchinson from Chelsea was there last season, so he doesn't really strengthen the squad because he was already there. Mm. But it's it's great that he's come back. Ben Johnson um, on a free transfer. Liam Delap. I think Liam Delap was a lot of money, but uh, you got to trust. I think it was twenty mil. You yeah. got to trust Kieran McKenna's view. And I look for for a forward in the Premier League. That's quite relatively low. Uh, Jacob Greaves, a good signing as well from Hull. And the goalkeeping situation, Ami Murich from Burnley and uh, Vladki has gone the other way. So that that was a strange one for me. Murich, yeah, I think he'll he'll come in and do really well. Do you think there'll be more signings? And, and where do you think Ipswich will finish up? Can they I, survive? I, I think there'll be more signings, one or two, but they have to fit into what Kieran McKenna wants. And it looks like the, the summer signings so far are... And I've said this before, that the, the bonus they've had is none of their regulars from last season has left either. So they've kept all their best players at the club, all their players that have that winning mentality, that momentum coming. They'll be closer to top 10 than relegation next season. Do you think? I think with Kieran McKenna, anything's possible. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.